Hi, adventurers. Thanks for joining us. Please stay to the end for a yummy knock-knock joke. Also, if you could, please kindly like and subscribe. We love having you here. Thank you and enjoy. It was harvest time and Mr. Rankins needed help picking his apples. George and his friend, the man with the yellow hat, were happy to lend a hand. George. Or foot. Mr. Rankins explained they needed to collect every apple. I'm going to join the Mrs. Round back, he said. Once you fill the cart, you can unload it into the washing trough. Mr. Rankins took his cart full of apples to the barn and dumped them into the water. It must be their bath time, George thought. George climbed up the branches, collected the shiny red apples in his friend's hat, and put them into the cart. What fun! High up in the tree, he saw Jumby the squirrel picking apples too. George decided to help. He took Jumby's apple and tossed it into the cart with the rest of Mr. Rankin's apples. But Jumpy wanted the apple for himself. He leaped in to take it back, and George tried to stop him. He thought Jumpy was helping him, huh? Easy now, George. That lever releases all of the apples, said his friend. George looked at the lever. He thought it was an excellent way to get Jumpy out of the cart. George, no! George pulled the lever, and Jumpy tumbled out along with all the apples. That's okay, said his friend with a sigh. We can gather them up again. But Jumpy found his apple and he ran to hide it in the barn. George decided to follow. The man with the yellow hat is very tolerant. George looked around the inside of the barn in wonder. There were all sorts of things to climb on and swing from. It must be some kind of monkey playground. But George was not here to play. He had to get that apple from Jumpy. If only it weren't so dark in the barn. He found the light switch and flipped it. Everything moved. It was a machine, not a playground. George wondered how it worked. He watched the buckets scoop up the apples. He decided they must carry the apples high away from the squirrels. But wait, where was Jumpy? There he was. Jumpy still had the apple he took from the cart. George chased Jumpy, grabbed the apple, and threw it into a bin high out of reach. Suddenly, the machine stopped. George found a button and pushed. The machine started again. This time, all of the parts started working, including the moving belt. But when he looked up, he saw all of the Rankins' beautiful apples being chopped into bits. The chopped up apples dropped into a giant barrel, and a lid was lowered tightly on top of them. Too tightly, liquid began to pour out of the barrel. What a mess! George had an idea. He ran up and put his mouth under the liquid. It tasted good. A lot like apples, but there was too much of it. Luckily, he saw some empty containers. But that'd be so yummy. George scrambled to put the containers on the moving belt fast enough to catch the liquid. Then he looked down at the end of the belt and saw the containers falling onto the floor. Uh-oh, George ran to catch them. Then he needed to stop the machine. Soon he had filled all of the containers, but the golden liquid continued to pour out. He looked around for another container and saw a big pair of rubber boots. As the last boot was filled, the liquid stopped pouring out and the machine stopped. Whew! The farmers in George's front appeared in the doorway. Well, I'll be, Mr. Rinkins exclaimed. George froze. The Rinkinsons would surely be upset that he ruined all their apples. George, Mrs. Rinkins rushed up to him. You've done a fantastic job. All that cider already pressed and bottled. Thank you. This is some machine, said the man with the yellow hat. See, the apples are washed here, Mrs. Rinkins explained. Then they are lifted up to the chopper because chopped apples give more juice. The juice is pressed out of the apples and then bottled. George had not ruined the apples after all. He turned them into cider. Mr. Rankins handed an apple to George. Here, you've earned it, he said. George knew someone who wanted the apple more than he did. He'd had enough apples for one day. You went to the assembly line? When George accidentally turned on the cider press, he learned how cider is made. In each step, a different part of the machine performs a specific task. And when all the steps are put together, the end result is bottled cider. This process is called an assembly line. Assembly lines allow companies to make their products faster, cheaper, and more evenly. If George had tried to do each step of the cider making assembly line by himself, it would have taken a lot longer to fill those bottles of cider. Below are the tasks each part of the cider press machine performed to make the cider. Can you number them in the correct order? Which one was first? Do you remember? 
Yep, step one, what was number two? The bath, yep. Number three, yep. Number four, mm -hmm. number four, number five, and then what's number six? Yes, siree. Knock, knock, who's there? Bologna, bologna who? Bologna sandwich with mayo and cheese, please.